this was me. For the past four days, I've been live covering severe weather on the channel. And lo and behold, my face camera couldn't handle the stress anymore. So now it's broke, and we will just have to deal with an improvised version of me until at least Sunday. It'll be fine. I hope. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for April 12th, 2024. Now, we do have some severe weather to talk about, but first, if you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you are new to the channel. With that being said, we also have to talk about the threat for severe weather today before we get into the future, because if you've been on this channel, you know that there's going to be some strong severe weather coming up on Monday and Tuesday. First off, we have a risk for severe weather over here on Friday. We have some for portions of the Pacific Northwest as well as the extreme Northeast. If you are over in these green areas, you have a one out of five on the severe weather scale. We can move on over into Saturday. We also have the threat for severe weather across portions of Oregon, but all of this seems to be marginal. Once again, a one out of five on the severe weather scale. That'll continue to move on through into Sunday, whereas the uh, potential for severe weather is possible across portions of the Ohio Valley into the northern mid-Atlantic and into the southern northeastern United States. We're talking areas here in Pennsylvania, Ohio, northern West Virginia, as well as extreme eastern Indiana. And that will then lead into our severe weather threat here on Monday, whereas we do have the a uh, very real chance of some significant severe weather across portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, as well as even into areas of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri. So if you know anyone who live over there, definitely something to watch out for. And that'll continue to move further and further east as we have our severe weather risk on Tuesday for portions of the Midwest all the way down into the Ozarks in the extreme southern plains. So something to watch out for with that as we continue to move on through. Now let's take a look at the models here, kind of show you guys what's going to happen. The timing is in the top left-hand portion of your screen. So if you're curious as to when this all can move on through, be sure to look at that frequently. We have a trough that's digging through the eastern portions of the United States at this current time, meaning we have a low pressure system that is kind of in the middle of these two extreme ends. If you were to kind of cut it in half, or if you kind of take a look at how the jet stream digs down into the southern portions of the United States and curls back up, right above that bulge is where you can see your upper level low pressure. If you think of the jet stream more as kind of a river and how the river constantly changes, then you can understand as to the reason why there is another trough that's going to be moving on through here into portions of the Pacific Southwest. We're talking over here. We have a lot of precipitation that is likely to occur over to portions of California during this time from Saturday into Sunday before we can start to see this low pressure system move a little bit further off to the east. And when it does, that is where we could potentially see our stronger severe weather. Note how the wind shear also starts to get a lot more uh, increasingly significant. And notice how it is a lot more significant down here into portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. So uh, that is where the stronger winds are going to be aloft. You can see that even if we go even higher up above the surface, up into the 300 millibar wind shear, this is uh, the extreme winds all the way up there. We have a localized jet streak that is going to be moving across this area, which is going to increase a lot of the ventilation throughout this general vicinity, making thunderstorms pretty frequent in some of these areas. And uh, that's kind of the reason why the Storm Prediction Center is very, uh, you know, very hellbent into saying, hey, there's going to be some thunderstorms that are going to be within some of these areas and uh, not really anywhere else. So uh, folks that are over here in Nebraska, Iowa, all the way down Kansas into Oklahoma and Texas, definitely going to want to watch out for some thunderstorms. We can take a look a little bit closer towards the surface, our 850 millibar wind shear, which is about one kilometer above ground level. It will show you that there's actually going to be some strong wind shear here towards the surface as well. And it's actually going to be in abundance. We have a lot of wind shear that extends all the way from the Gulf of Mexico, all the way up into portions of the high plains. And uh, funny enough, uh, even though some storms are not really going to exist that far north, you can probably still see a lot of strong winds that are going to be in some of those areas. So notice here, we have our low pressure system that's right within that area. We have our streamlines that are swirling all the way around it here still. 
And uh, right at the uh, bottom here, once again, where the strongest wind shear aloft and the strongest wind shear here near the surface is, that is where we could probably see our more significant showers and thunderstorms. And uh, note, the wind shear starts to increase overnight. That is perfectly normal, believe it or not, as uh, when nighttime does come around, that's when wind shear typically starts to increase in activity. We also want to note that around this time, we have an abundance of moisture. If we go and uh, take a look from Monday morning all the way up into Monday afternoon, you can see that once we get into the uh, overnight hours as well, a lot of moisture is present here, a lot of 60 degree dew points. Anything that's really below that isn't really going to be too severe within this event. So that's kind of the reason why anything north of Nebraska doesn't really see a whole lot of severe weather. So. If you're over in like South Dakota, North Dakota, now you kind of understand it's going to be a little bit on the cooler side for you all. But folks that are over here, once again, we have an abundance of moisture in some of these areas here in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And that is kind of the reason why you guys could potentially be seeing severe weather. Another thing that we can be looking at is how much instability is in the atmosphere. We have a lot of these yellows and reds and even some uh, greens to some extent. This is going to tell us as to how much instability there is. Basically, the convective available potential energy is looking at how quickly air can rise within a given environment. If you have a lot of warm air, think of like a pot of boiling water, that steam is going to rise. But steam can actually rise faster depending upon how cold the air above it is. And so if you have very cold air aloft, very warm air at the surface, and if you have a bigger displacement between the two, that usually can give you a good idea as to how much instability there is. And if you have a bigger displacement, once again, more instability is going to be present within that environment. So you can see here, once we get into the afternoon, into the late evening and the overnight hours, we have a crap ton of instability over here. We're talking about almost 4,000 joules per kilogram. Take a look at the bottom right hand side. You can see that's the number, the maximum number that you could potentially get here within this environment. And so there's definitely going to be a lot of energy, especially overnight. So watch out for the threat of some severe weather that is uh, likely going to be significant. Right now, all hazards are possible, at, le you know, at least according to a lot of the models here. We're talking tornadoes, we're talking damaging winds, we're talking very large hail. I think the uh, potential for strong tornadoes is definitely possible. And I also think the potential for extraordinarily large hail, especially with how much energy and instability we have, once again, the rising of the atmosphere, uh, the rising of air within the atmosphere, can actually give us an idea as to how strong some of our updrafts can be. And with our stronger updrafts, that usually can result to at least very large hail. And this will likely continue to be the case as we move over here into Tuesday. You can see we have a lot of instability in the atmosphere along this axis, which is the reason why the Storm Prediction Center also highlighted the threat for severe weather into some of these areas. So definitely something to watch out for. Uh, this isn't really going to be changing a whole lot. Once again, you have more wind shear that's going to be pushing on through into portions of this risk on Tuesday. You have a lot of strong lower level winds that are going to continue uh, once again within this general area as well. And the moisture is not really going to go away. I mean, you can take a look and you can see even in some areas, it actually has a higher abundance of it. We actually have some dew points that are up in the 70s in some of these areas. So it doesn't really look too much as if severe weather is really going to go away just after Monday. We're probably going to have severe weather that is going to continue even into Tuesday. So what does that mean for everyone when it comes to timing? Well, there's going to be some storms that are going to try and move on through here once again. As I said, Monday night into Tuesday, we're talking areas over here near the northern Texas panhandle into the southwestern portions of Oklahoma, or really just the western portions of Oklahoma. If you're in the western Oklahoma panhandle, you're not really going to be seeing too much. Maybe Woodward is kind of the general area as to where we could uh, potentially see Wichita Falls is probably going to be in the severe weather risk Lawton Oklahoma Frederick Oklahoma and then uh, all the way up over into portions probably just to the east of Dodge City Kansas and uh, maybe even around Dodge City Kansas so definitely something to watch out for and then those thunderstorms are going to continue to form overnight you can see we have a lot of these greens here across this general vicinity this is really where we can see a lot of our thunderstorms to exist. Maybe not all of them are severe, but most of them are probably going to be severe. And so if you live within some of those areas, you are going to want to watch out. But by the time we get towards the morning on Tuesday, those storms will kind of uh, likely disperse. Maybe there is the potential for uh, some overnight wind to occur, and maybe those storms could actually try to move on through further into portions 
of uh, the Tuesday risk. But for right now, we just have a lot of uncertainty as to what the storm mode could potentially be, whether we could be seeing a strong, significant wind event is possible, or if we could see a discrete supercell event that could you know, produce strong tornadoes or just tornadoes in general, or just only produce some large hail. One of those uh, scenarios is likely to be the outcome, but it's just the simple fact of the matter is until we get better models to come in, some better resolutions that can come in, we don't exactly know as to what the specific thing we can see. The one thing that we do know is that it is going to be a significant severe weather event and folks that are over there in the central plains are going to want to watch out. We also have the threat uh, likely for some marginal severe weather to slight severe weather over here into portions of the Ohio Valley down into the deep south. To what extent that is also to be determined because once again, once we're this far away, that's when we can start to try and... Uh, kind of play the guessing game a little bit too frequently. A lot of these models, especially the low resolution models, aren't exactly that accurate this far out in advance. Uh, they can only just kind of give us a general idea as to if things can happen. And the problem is, is that everyone and their mom and me want specific answers. And these models don't really give us that. So a little bit of patience from everyone, and uh, hopefully by the time we make a video tomorrow, we'll actually be able to give you guys a little bit more with our specifics on what is going to be happening on Monday. But believe it or not, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the link tree in the description down below. Please be sure to follow me on Twitch if you haven't already, as we're both live streaming on YouTube and Twitch from now on, and we have a lot of people that are over there as well, so feel free to stay tuned to that. Hopefully we will have our new webcam in by Sunday, so just kind of deal with the stick figure for now, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, everyone.